whenever presented with a set of alternatives, an individual must make a choice to go left or to go right or to go right straight down the middle. Let us talk about rationalizing a choice function. What is a choice function? If a set contains three alternatives, A, B, and C, we can consider a choice function amongst that must assign a choice to any elements of this set or any combination of elements. So for instance, we could consider the choice function, which we'll call C, could assign could assign to the choice set of A and B, maybe it assigns A. And maybe to B, C, it assigns C, etc. In fact, with three alternatives, we have 24 possible choice functions. Now, some of these choice functions will be something that we call rationalizable. We're talking about rationalizing a choice function. Some of these choice functions will not be rationalizable. What then is it to be rationalizable? Well, we say a choice function is rationalizable if there is a preference relation such that for every choice problem, the alternative specified by the choice function is the best alternative according to the preference relation. Now, we didn't, I didn't say one of the best. I said the best. The unique best alternative. Okay, if all we needed was for a choice function to be justified by some preferences that said it was equally the best, well, imagine a choice function that assigns, let's say, a choice function that assigns to the set A, B, assigns A, and then it assigns B to the set A, B, C. Now, we'll that is not going to be rationalizable. There's something weird going on here. I added an option, and my choice changed, but not to the new option. It, chose, it changed to something I could have chosen already. But let me make it big C for the choice. This is a bit of abusive notation, but you're going to get the idea here. All right. But now, of course, this, this could be, if I'm indifferent between all three of these things, then any choice I make between these three things, or between any combination of these three things, is equally preferable. But when we want to talk about a rationalizable choice function, we're going to have to say that these choices could be justified that these choices could be justified by the thing being chosen being strictly the best. Okay, we don't get anywhere with this rationalizing revealed preferences thing if we, if we allow for indifference. So let's suspend our disbelief there for a second. Okay, and we're going to come back to this later on. Now, Let's come up with an example here. All right, we got, suppose we define X, the set X as elements A, B, and C. Suppose we have some choice function that assigns choice 
If I'm given options A, B, and C, I choose A. If I'm given options A and B, I also choose A. If I'm given options A and C, I also choose A. And if I'm given options B and C, I choose B. So what preferences, what preference relation could rationalize these choice where we're considering these choices always being the best possible thing that I can choose? We're considering, in other words, what preference relation could we state that someone would make these choices and these always be strict, strictly preferred to the other, to the next best thing? Well, we just need to come up with a preference relation and I'll just save a couple steps. And I'm going to state in terms of strict preferences instead of the weak preferences. Because I could state in terms of anything I can state in terms of strict, I can state it in terms of weak. It just takes a little longer because we remember weak preferences. A strict preference is just weak preferences in one direction but not in the other direction. Okay, so it's pretty simple here. We see A is the best of the bunch, but when only got B and C, we choose B. So this is rationalized by A, strictly better than B, strictly better than C. Boom. But I could come up with a lot of other choice functions among these three alternatives. You can imagine I always choose A, I always choose B, I always choose C. Choose A when I'm facing anything that doesn't have C, but when it's facing something with C, I choose B. And of those, only some of these are rationalizable. Apparently of the 24, only six are rationalizable. Uh, choosing a meet, we get some examples here, choosing a median option, not rationalizable in general. Then what about this case of steak and salmon? The waiter tells you, you can have a salmon or a steak. Salmon is 250, steak is four pounds. You order the salmon. Then the waiter says, we also have frog's legs at $4.50. $4 and then you say, you know what? In that case, I'll have the steak. Does that make sense? Can that be rationalized? Well, there's a reasonable explanation for it, but maybe those choices should have been stated differently. Maybe it should have been stated in terms of a steak of unknown quality. So that's the example given in 2.3 in the, in the book. Now, the whole point is that the choice must be the same in every set in which it appears. So in the example, they say, once I add the frog's legs, the other choices seem different. Well, that's not the same choice then, is it? Okay, and then we have the party goer choice, but that's also not the same choice. There's more going on there. Okay, so we gotta be careful. We gotta be careful. You could explain this if you think about these things as meaning different things, because in the social situation, refusing an invitation is not just not going to a party. Refusing an invitation is consuming some terrible Zed, you're, you're getting this other thing bundled in there, which is you're insulting the person that offered you the invitation. So be careful with those violations. Are they really violations? And next I'm going to tell you about property alpha. And I just wanted to make it clear what we meant by rationalizable choices before I went into property alpha. Because it ha again, it has to be that we're talking about that there are some strict preferences that could explain these choices, not just indifference, because indifference can explain any choice. 